Hi lads and lasses, Modest Pelican here with a video looking at some alternative strategies in Battlefield 1. If you enjoyed this video, please text a random phone number asking them to subscribe to Modest Pelican Gaming. If they refuse, please use your humour, intellectual skills and the offering of nude photos to persuade them as this really helps spread the good word of my channel. Okay, so this first strategy is nicknamed the 420 Penetration. Basically, if you play as the Medic class and equip smoke grenades and the rocket propelled smoke grenade gadget, you will have six smoke grenades at your disposal. If your entire squad runs this setup, you will have a total of 30 smoke grenades. And honestly, it's pretty amusing when you fire them all at once. My squad and I were playing on Giant's Shadow, which has many wide open spaces. And therefore we regularly found ourselves getting sniped by prone scout players who were using one hand to shoot us and one hand to jerk off to American sniper Chris Kyle's autobiography. Using the smoke grenades, we were able to completely conceal ourselves and move up to the next objective safely. This tactic actually worked so much better than I thought it would and I have been using smoke grenades on a few of my classes ever since. I think this tactic would also work well for those times dice balances the teams and chooses to put you on the side with a bunch of incoherent virgins and stacks the enemy team with a bunch of max level platoon members who snort at a roll for breakfast. For example, if they had spawn trapped you, you could try setting up a smoke screen to push out and capture an objective. Anyway, at the very least, it's pretty funny smoking up entire areas of a map. This next strategy is called Malaysian Airlines Flight 370 and involves a gadget I don't see many players using, the anti-air rocket gun. It is possible to shoot down planes by yourself with this gun, but when you have five soldiers all shooting together, you can bring down planes with ease. This is so satisfying because being repeatedly bombed by some top gun twat in a plane can make even the calmest of players rage. Basically, the lads and I perched up on a hill and fired our anti-air rocket guns and actually destroyed loads of planes. But the pilots started wising up and bailing when the first rocket would hit them. So we grew smarter and began all firing our rockets at exactly the same time and the results were glorious. Three, two, one, fire. <laughs> So the next map that came up was Feo Fortress and we noticed there was an absolute noob bipodding with a light machine gun deep in his own spawn area. Poor guy was probably getting tired of getting slapped around and so he thought he would seek shelter in the out of bounds area. Anyway, this strategy is called Daddy's Home and basically you get your entire squad to rush noobs who think that they are safe. Welcome to Battlefield, big fella. The invincible landship is damn good fun and makes the most of the support class's repair tool gadget. Basically, you get your squad to fully crew a landship, which in itself is damn good fun. And then when the grenades and explosives start raining in, the gunners will jump out and use their repair tools to keep the vehicle from ever being destroyed. If you do this correctly, you can keep a landship alive for an extremely long time and can win games for your team as you cruise around capturing flags while utilizing one of the finest World War One stealth tactics possible, painting your landship like a fucking zebra. This zebra camouflage might not be ideal for most terrain, but if a bunch of zebras run past, you will be virtually invisible. Eventually, a few skilled enemy players managed to take down our land ship using some clever explosive tricks. But I think the most impressive thing is they managed to realize that we were in fact an enemy tank and not just a wild zebra. Fuck <laughs> that. This next strategy is called Galloping for Jesus and is basically where you get an entire squad of cavalry to charge into battle with the anger of Genghis Khan. If he had just found out that his ninth wife had taken half of Mongolia in their divorce settlement. Before we charged into battle, we did a little bit of dressage so that the lads could get pumped up and then we stormed the sea flag and gave the enemy everything we had. It was pretty epic storming a flag with five horses, but honestly, this did not work at all. I thought I was at least going to get a juicy double kill, but my sword did no damage at all. And then in a panic state, I dismounted my horse and got shot in the head. 
A big thanks to Stealtho Mato, Stealtho Simo, Bonesy, and Crosby for testing out some of these 1000 IQ strategies with me. The Battlefield 5 beta comes out in a couple of days, and I am going to upload content on that, as well as stream, so I'll catch you very soon. Cheers for watching you legends, and thanks to my patrons. Stay hydrated, and until next time, and as always, stay classy.